It's official. The epic Bitcoin conference in Nashville 2024 is over. Were you impressed by the Trumpster's speech? Did he say the magic words? Were you underwhelmed? Did he meet your expectations? Did he surpass your expectations? Sure that these are all questions that you're kind of wondering about. Anyways, let's dive into parts of his speech, which maybe could be seen as good, bad, absurd. Let's dive into the Trumpster speech and see how he did. With respect and admiration for what the Bitcoin community has achieved, it's incredible, actually. I sort of say to my sons, it's like incredible because they know so much about it. It's so They're so aware of it, much more so than people that are a little bit older. But I say this is the steel industry of 100 years ago. It really is. I think you're just in your infancy. I can see it happening. All right. So not even two minutes into the speech. Donald Trump is comparing Bitcoin to the steel industry. Definitely, definitely, this is the type of thing that we want to hear, right? Like this is this is great hopium, um, because anybody who read their history understands um, essentially what the steel industry meant for the rail industry, right? And then, of course, we all understand what the rail industry meant for consumable products. These are just great words, right? I mean, it sounds good. Obviously, if we're in Bitcoin, we feel this way about Bitcoin. And we're like, yeah, of course, we're the, you know, th this is the early pioneers. So, so far, so good. Look at that. It's already bigger than ExxonMobil. Soon it will be surpassing the entire market cap of silver. It's not bad. How about gold? How about gold? Let's go gold. And one day it probably will overtake gold. But based on the way it's going now, it could very well be a possibility. There's never been anything like it. And I don't think you've ever seen anything like it. OK, so here he says the magic words again, right, that he believes that Bitcoin can overtake gold. Now, of course, we, we all know, right? He's vying to be the president of the United States. He is definitely going to say the words that we want to hear. And he is going to want to gain our support, right? Because look, um, at the end of the day, for him, this is a battle for votes and nothing else. I know that we as Bitcoiners would like to imagine that he um, understands Bitcoin in the same way that a lot of us do. But the truth of the matter is, is that I, I believe he doesn't. Um, and I think that that's evidenced by the way that he finishes the speech. Anyways, let's continue on and let's see what other wonderful comments he had to say about the corn. The United States will be the crypto capital of the planet and the Bitcoin superpower of the world. And we'll get it done. Uh, he said the C word. Um, look, for the people that are disappointed in this, you shouldn't be. Um, because that would mean that really what you're disappointed in is the expectation that you've created um, of of the Trumpster, okay, or of any politician who uh, touts Bitcoin and says the magic words about Bitcoin. Look, um, the reality is is that we go back again, right? These are politicians. Politicians, uh, first and foremost, um, are there to garner votes and to maintain their power and uh, essentially maintain their teams. So the reality is is that they're not they're not interested in bitcoin only if it, you know, if it isolates a whole other voting group. So he's going to say bitcoin and crypto. And in all fairness, I don't think he really understands the difference. But also, I don't really care if he understands the difference right now. Um, because again, I, I also know that when I first came into this space, one of the one, one of the biggest mental hurdles was actually under for me. Right, I'm not talking about this for all all noobs. Some people get it right away. For me, I had to go through I had to go through the mental exercises of understanding why Bitcoin was different. So, anyways, let's continue. If crypto is going to define the future, I want to be mined, minted, and made 
in the USA it's going to be. It's not going to be made anywhere else. And if Bitcoin is going to the moon, as we say, it's going to the moon. I want America to be the nation that leads the way. And that's what's going to happen. I mean, it's no surprise there, right? Uh, the idea that uh, Donald Trump would be a Bitcoin proponent primarily, I think is kind of far-fetched, right? Um, regardless of the way that we look at it, he is a statist, okay? And uh, I'm saying that in the sense of he believes in American hegemony, right? And as anybody from any country that loves their country, they believe that their country should have some type of unfair advantage. That's just unfortunately the way that things work. Uh, now, I'm not suggesting here uh, that he, that Donald Trump is saying that we should have an unfair advantage, but instead what I'm suggesting is, is that of course he wants the rails, he wants the business, he wants the center of Bitcoin activity and of course begrudgingly crypto, he wants it to be here in the States. And this should be no surprise to anyone because again, he believes in the dollar hegemony. So of course, right, he wants to strengthen the dollar. And so he believes that Bitcoin could be the answer to helping strengthen perception and the dollar. So that's, anyways, that that's my take on that. Uh, I've heard from Vivek, 175 million people in some form are involved with this world of crypto and Bitcoin and all of the others, 175 million. So when they heard that, they said, let's be nice to them, at least until after the election. So uh, I've taken a lot of pressure off a lot of people. A lot of people are very happy today that about three months ago weren't so thrilled. For three and a half years, is that right? Look, he just said that's right. So this is, I, I find part of, this, this is the Trumpster par for the course, okay? Um, he's stepping in, he's gonna be the savior. Hey, look, guys, your industry has been struggling, but here I am, I'm taking, I'm taking the attention, the bad attention for you so that your business can flourish. Um, that's an interesting framing. Uh, I, I can appreciate that. I, I do believe that that's kind of the, uh, part of it could just be that he's being a good politician and he's trying to remind everyone why, um, he is making a difference uh, in this space, but I, you know what, I, I think that that's maybe just a little uh, too much of like an elephant in the brain type of blind spot. Um, I, I think it just has to do with, you know, with narcissism really uh, and self-involvement um, because he, he does always see himself as a, as a hero. Um, and when things go wrong, he does always see himself as a victim. And that is unfortunately, you know, par for the course with narcissistic behavior. So um, yeah, I, I mean, this particular comment, look, it doesn't, it, it shouldn't surprise any one of us, right? There's millions of people that are getting involved in Bitcoin and crypto. Okay. So the truth of the matter is, is that what we've seen come out of the Democratic Party in terms of, and again, it's not everybody in the Democratic Party because I've seen now that there have been some people there where they're like, you know what, I'm not so sure we should be attacking crypto. And not everybody is on the same side as uh, Senator Warren uh, about this, uh, about Bitcoin and, and crypto. So I, I hate to paint it as left and right, but we'll just say, that it seems that the majority of supporters which are uh, in favor of quote unquote clamping down and attacking Bitcoin and crypto seem to be uh, from the Democratic Party. But um, the point that he's making is, hey, they're trying to attack you. I'm here to save you. That That's really the point that he's making. All right, let's keep going. Says President, I will immediately shut down Operation Choke Point 2.0. They want to choke you. They want to choke you out of business. We're not going to let that happen. And no longer will your government sit by and watch as Bitcoin jobs and businesses flee to other countries because America's laws are too unclear and too tough and too angry and too stiff. Okay, so this has been a pretty interesting theme, okay? Um, I, I think, I don't know who Trumpster's advisors are, but he seems to have this impression that 
Bitcoiners and Bitcoin businesses are moving to China. Um, I don't think that's really what's happening. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really convinced that these businesses are are, are moving to China. Um, Again, I also am not really convinced as to where exactly they are moving, um, but I think it's it's only it's only natural to assume that businesses are going to move where laws favor them. I mean, that's you know, if if it is a business that can quote unquote get up and move, then it will get up and move and go to where the laws uh, favor them. Now, of course, it's a whole lot different when you're in the business of wafer production or some or something like that, or producing chips, right? Like chipsets or something like that. Uh, it's a lot more difficult to move a a factory than it is to move a financial services business, which is essentially just human capital and data. Um, but yes, uh, he has this incredible fear that um, that China is somehow going to eat the U.S.'s lunch when it comes to to Bitcoin and crypto. Uh, so I, I do find that I do find that very interesting. And he does mention it several times. Industry America will once again be a nation that protects property rights, privacy, freedom of transaction, freedom of association and freedom of speech. We're going to change our we're going to go back to the old days when we were a nation that was building, not a nation that was eating itself alive from within. In this particular part where he's talking about property rights, self-sovereignty, this is music to Bitcoiners' ears. Now, I just want to point out, though, this is where it gets kind of, again, uh, we we kind of hit this, this paradox moment because Bitcoiners don't, uh, at least the Bitcoiners that have come to Bitcoin for the medium of exchange and, and who I guess came to Bitcoin earlier, uh, they're not looking for the state to give them permission. Um, you know, like I can say that from when I came into Bitcoin, like I didn't come to Bitcoin because I was looking for permission from the state for self-sovereignty and and property rights and all of that good stuff. I was like, no, I'm coming to Bitcoin because I can take this. I can I can take this and I can enforce this on my own. Um, so I I think that uh, it's a it's a great pander, right? It's a great pander. It totally works for the uh, the the self sovereignty maximalists, right? They they hear those words. It's like oh that that's great, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the the government um, the government doesn't actually really care uh, about your or my self sovereignty. They don't. The government doesn't really care about your or my property rights because at the end of the day. It's the government that, quote unquote, runs the country. So it's a nice pander. I appreciate it. Um, I do know also on the other side, it is the it is the government that is going to enforce um, these particular these particular laws. But the reality is, is that on the Bitcoin network. No government has any say that is the truth right now, obviously, out here in the real world. Uh, governments, police, all of that good stuff. There are real implications. There are real consequences. Um, but in terms of the Bitcoin network, um, there's not a single government that can afford uh, that that can enforce any type of action on the Bitcoin network. But I appreciate the pandering to uh, to personal freedom. Let's continue. Allowing us to extend the dominance of the U.S. dollar to new frontiers all around the world. America will be richer, the world will be better, and there will be billions and billions. There we have it again. The Trumpster is a dollar maxi, right? And he is a statist that is here to preserve the hegemony, the, the U.S. dollar hegemony, okay? So this is just, it's par for the course, right? And the, you know, obviously what these guys figure out is that, hey, you know, if I pander to this group of people and I tell them, hey, listen, we're going to make your industry flourish. We are going to loosen the rules so that you can run free and build everything that you can. That makes a whole bunch of people really happy, really excited. OK, and it also serves his purpose of keeping the business here and maintaining and or strengthening the position of the U.S. dollar in the world. So, I mean, this is really this is no surprise. Those of you in this room inherit the legacy of generations of American pioneers and patriots, risk takers and renegades who settled this continent, built the modern world and lived on the bleeding edge. You live on a bleeding edge. You do know that Bitcoiners don't. So when you hear stuff like this come from the Trumpster, you, you think to yourself, 
maybe he does know what we're about. Maybe he gets it. I hate to say this. I, I hate to offer the other side to that coin because it, it does totally sound good. It makes me feel good, right? The warm and fuzzies, he gets us. I, I, I just I just think that that's his speech writers. Uh, I, th I think that that's his, his crew, right? His team kind of helping him out. They did the research and they gave him the magic words to say, um, I... Part of me really wants to believe that he believes this, um, that, that we are these pioneers and whatnot, uh, because of essentially the type of business that his father built before him and what he did with his father's business. And, and again, I am not going to get into the whole, you know, like, uh, you know, he actually dismantled his father's business and made less money and all this stuff doesn't make a difference. It, it's completely irrelevant. The point is, is the speech here, right? And does he believe what he is saying? That, that to me is, is what matters. Do I believe that the Trumpster believes what he's saying? Unfortunately, I don't really believe that he believes what he's saying, um, but I do believe that he's very passionate about saying it. How about that? And we will make America and Bitcoin bigger, better, stronger, richer, freer, and greater than ever before. Thank you all. Have a good time with your Bitcoin and your crypto and everything else that you're playing with. And we're going to make that one of the greatest industries on Earth. Good luck and God bless you all. Thank you. God bless you. Thank the way the Trumpster finished off that speech. Uh, yeah. I, my personal opinion is that that sums up what he really what he really thinks about it. And and again, I understand that there could be the other side to that coin is, you know, Phil, this is just the way he speaks, you know, like he doesn't mean anything by it. Okay. I, I can take that right. And say that fair enough, maybe that's true. Um, but I don't think so. Um, because again, I go back to the dollar hegemony. Um, he believes in the U S dollar and, and I'm not blaming him for it, but I, I'm just, trying to explain the frame of mind. The US dollar for him, right, is is real money, okay? Bitcoin and crypto and stuff, he sees the industry, he sees the potential of making money, right? Like, so Bitcoin and crypto is here and then there's money over here. Like, so I don't actually necessarily believe that he understands it. Uh, the way that we do, the way I, I don't think that he understands that it enables uh, that Bitcoin enables personal freedom uh, and makes it more attainable to the individual. I, I, I don't think so. Uh, I just I think that he sees it as the means to an end. Right. He sees this group of people who are obviously um, hardworking, ambitious, uh, and at the same time, they're thinking critically and he realizes that they have some certain amount of wealth that they've been able to accumulate. So he understands, he understands that pandering to all of us is going to be very good for him. Okay. And he also understands that we believe in Bitcoin. Okay. So he has to, in my eyes, he is pandering to us in a way that makes us feel good about our belief in Bitcoin. But I think that we shouldn't make any mistake. He is a dollar maxi um, and he is a statist. So yeah, you know, like I, I, again, we shouldn't have any illusion about any of these politicians. So my overall feeling about the speech, right? Do, was it a nothing burger? Kind of, it was, it was kind of a nothing burger. I mean, he said what we kind of expected him to say. I really, okay, and I also, I really appreciate that he did mention uh, freeing Ross, okay? I, he did mention that, that that is going to be one of the first things he's going to do, if not the first thing that he's going to do, so I really did appreciate that. I hope that if he does get elected, that he does do that. Something I think that people expected him to say, which maybe would have gotten him a little bit more applause than when he, uh, when he said he's going to fire Gary Gensler. Um, and I just want to point out, when he said he's going to fire... Gary Gensler, all those people cheering in the crowd, those are all shitcoiners because <laughs> the Bitcoiners don't care. <laughs> Bitcoiners couldn't care less about Gary Gensler, but it's a lot of shitcoiners that are like, yeah, pump my bags, get rid of Gary so that we can we can grift all these noobs with vaporware. Um, but I, I do think um, that 
I think that the capital gains tax, I think that he would have gotten a lot of applause and a lot more uh, excitedness if he would have mentioned uh, removing the capital gains tax from uh, from Bitcoin. Um, if you choose to you know, convert your Bitcoin into fiat dollars and take a profit, then you do have to pay capital gains on that profit. And I, I think that that is something that uh, that would have gone, I think, a much longer way than firing Gary Gensler or or talking about how, you know, we're pioneers. Because really, at the end of the day, the biggest problem, the biggest problem that we have, well, we, it's kind of two problems, right? Uh, number one, it's the infinite money printing. And number two, it's these governments, uh, or specifically the government that then takes this money that they print and they push it into programs that really aren't necessary for any of us or for the well-being of of our society. Guys, I don't hate Donald Trump. I, I just I don't believe in politics. I've said this before on on previous shows, and I will always continue to say it because I, I can't. They, these are salesmen. They are all salesmen. I don't care which one it is. Every single one of them is a salesman. And their goal, right, is to get ahead. And I am not faulting them for that. But we just need to understand that when we're watching these people and they say the magic words and we feel good when they say those words. So then all of a sudden we create this uh, this expectation of of this person that we think they are of uh, we create this expectation of the things they're going to do that are just going to be so good for us. This is this is not what's happening. OK, this is not what's real. Anyways, uh, I did think it was really cool that he spoke at the Bitcoin conference. Uh, we could see that a lot of people were really happy about it. There was a lot of excitement. Kind of still waiting for that special guest. We don't really know what happened to that special guest. Or was Donald the special guest? Who knows? Who knows? Anyways, guys, that's my take on the Trumpsters speech. <laughs>